Hey, I'm Stephanie. Let's talk about makeup. It is absolutely frigid here in Munich today, so to get ready for this video, I put on a warm sweater, got a hot water bottle, and made myself a hot cup of tea. And now I am officially ready to review this palette. This is the MAC Artist Library palette with the title Nude Model, and a friend of mine gave this to me. She tried it, she didn't like it, and she knows that if there is a colorful dirt like this in the world that I have not tried yet, that I'm going to want to smear it all over my eyeballs. So that's what I've been doing for like the last two weeks, and I thought I'd share my thoughts, because why not? A brief note before I begin, I will be leaving timestamps in the show notes so you can simply fast forward to the information that's most relevant for you. On to this sleek little palette. This guy has been available on the market since I think 2018 or 2019, so it's by no means new, even though it's new to me. Um, and it is a permanent item in Max lineup, so it is very widely available, and I will leave some links in the show notes for you in case you'd like to give it a closer look for yourself. As for this particular individual palette, my friend told me that it was a Tati made me buy it moment. Uh, just in case you don't know who Tati is, she is a really popular beauty YouTuber. She's got millions of followers, has probably one of the largest makeup collections on earth and apparently um, she recently decluttered almost everything and she only kept a handful of eyeshadow palettes and so my friend noticed that she had kept this one and she thought well if Tati Westbrook who knows everything there is to know about makeup wanted to keep this palette then it must be good so she bought it and didn't like it <laughs> so that's how I ended up with it in my hands, and it turned out to be a great opportunity for me to revisit MAC eyeshadows, because to be honest, I haven't used uh, this particular formula in years. The MAC eyeshadow formula, especially when it comes to the mattes, tends to be a little bit firmer, a little bit stiffer, but very finely milled, so it's very easy to gradually build up color or to really blow out the look and get a great and graceful blend. So if you're into a no-makeup makeup look or you like a really blown out smoky eye. I feel like MAC is still kind of where it's at. I know that MAC has kind of fallen out of favor lately, especially because, you know, eyeshadow formulas have come so far, but I think these still have a lot of value. There are seven mattes in this palette. Uh, six of them are in these two rows here, and there's one up here in this corner. There's also a pearl shade here. It's a very pale pink down here in this bottom corner. There are two metallic shades, this gold and this pewter shade. And these two metallic shades are a little bit different because they have kind of like sparkly particles in them, almost as if there's like micro glitter in there, which there isn't, but it looks that way. And so you'd think, oh, these are kind of like really special. Maybe they're topper shades, but no. Um, in end effect for all intents and purposes these are just simple metallics because once you put them on your eye they just look like normal metallics like you don't see those glitter particles at all so there's a nice shine to them um, but I find that if you apply these with a brush you do get kind of follow and it is those kind of shiny glittery particles end up on your cheeks so I find that these two shades are best applied with either a finger or like a silicone applicator like this one um, I also enjoy applicators like this in general just because they've got a pointed tip so they allow for more precise application this one's from Essence but NYX makes one Sephora makes them. Um, this was like three bucks. So like they're, you know, easy to clean, easy to use, cheap. So I like those for these types of shades. Um, you could probably also use these wet. I haven't tried that because I don't tend to use uh, like wet things with my eyeshadows. This peach shade is probably my favorite in the palette and it is a true metallic. I find that it really easily blends out. It gives a very nice smooth kind of silky sheen to the eye. It's not the kind of metallic that's going to like gleam at everybody from across the room, but it is impactful enough to be effective, especially for a very natural look. And this last purple plum shade here is a metallic with a glittery finish without actually having any glittery particles in it. I also find that this shade is best applied with a fingertip or a silicone applicator, and it's best to apply it in a thin layer because I feel like the formula of it has maybe more silicone than the other ones, and so it can tend to kind of move around on the lid a little bit, maybe 
tend to crease more if you use it in a thick layer. The good news is you can build up the opacity extremely quickly. You don't need a thick layer. And that's good because especially if you have any texture on your eyelids or if your eyelids are more mature, this is the kind of shade, you know, when you can just use a very little of it and it's very effective, that's good because it's going to reduce the texture. The last couple of times I used this palette, I posted the looks on Instagram. Every single one of the pictures was taken in natural light. And um, I tried to feature like a different row of the palette every in every look. So one of them was the golden row, one of them was the peach row, and one of them was the mauve row. And then there was one day where I kind of mixed it all together, but because I wanted it a little bit smokier, I used more of the mauves. Um, I tried to post my makeup of the day Monday through Friday on Instagram. So if you like that sort of thing, feel free to go follow me at the Style Stumbler on IG. What I really like about MAC eyeshadows is there's not a whole lot of kick up in the pan and there's not a whole lot of fallout on the cheeks. So you can very easily use these after your whole face of makeup is done without worrying about, you know, having to clean up anything on the cheeks afterwards. The only two shades that gave me any noticeable fallout were really these two, the pewter shade and the gold shade. I think this one's called Les Artistes and I think this one's called Go Lightly. Um, but as I mentioned, you can avoid the fallout if you simply don't use a brush and use a finger or a a silicone applicator instead. I really like the packaging of this palette as well. Um, not only do I enjoy the kind of painted aesthetic at the front, but it's also very sleek, very thin, very easy to pack. It's very robust. And it has a pretty darn massive mirror here. And um, what I also like is that you can position the mirror and it stays wherever you want it to. And so that means if I were traveling, I could potentially put this on a bureau and turn the bureau into a temporary vanity if I needed to. And it clicks and stays shut. I can see why my friend didn't enjoy this palette so much because I know her taste. When she wears metallic eyeshadow, you can see it gleam from clear across the room. The metallics in this palette are much more subtle and I feel like they offer more of a soft glow than anything else. They bring attention and light to the eye without drawing attention to your makeup. She loves drama in her makeup and this really isn't the palette for that. That's not to say that you can't get a more dramatic look if you want to. I mean, you can get a very beautifully blown out smoky eye with this palette. But for example, um, these two darkest shades in the palette, which I think lend themselves the most to a blown out smoky eye, um, they do blend out well, but I feel like they can tend to get just a little bit patchy towards the edges. So you do have to take your time building them up and blending them out if you want a more dramatic look. And if you want a high impact look in general with this palette, you're gonna have to take time to build it up because these are the types of shadows that are made for a more natural look. So if you want higher impact or if you want more definition, you're just gonna have to take the time to do the placement and build up those colors. For someone who who has makeup tastes like me, I think that of that as a good thing because I don't wanna accidentally have drama explode on my eyelids. I want it to be intentional. And so I feel like a palette like this makes it really easy. So who is this palette for? Well, I think it's probably an ideal starter palette for someone who wants to do just very basic looks, um, maybe to define their face more in Zoom meetings or something, especially, you know, if you're scared of pigmentation or, you know, you feel like you don't know what you're doing. I feel like it's kind of hard to mess up looks with this eyeshadow palette. Um, if you're someone like me who has a lot of eyeshadow palettes or are ready, would this be a good palette? Like, say... You're watching this video and you have a lot of eyeshadows already and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, but I like the idea of that really blown out, easygoing look. Like that sounds like a perfect, you know, basic Betty palette. You're right. It is a perfect basic Betty palette. However, because it's so basic, if you have a lot of eyeshadow palettes already, chances are you already have all of these shades. And yes, the blendability is great. However, um... If you have a more pigmented shadow and you just go in with a fluffier brush and a lighter hand, chances are you can get the same gracefully blown out look with the shadows you already have. So do I think this is a necessity for people who already have a lot of makeup? No, I don't.
To prove my point, I went through my makeup kit and found a couple of palettes that I think are comparable. The first one's from the drugstore. It's this Nudes of New York palette from Maybelline. Um, the color scheme is not the same, but it's very similar. However, I feel like the general vibe of this palette is just very similar, especially when it comes to the finishes. It's very hard for me to get a super defined look with this palette. I feel like for the most part, I get very soft looks. I feel like, you know, I can contour and bring light to, to my eye as I want to, but I don't get a whole lot of definition with this palette. But um, I still think I get beautiful looks with it. And so I feel like in that way, they're kind of comparable. Both of these palettes will give you a soft, blown out look. Both of them will be beautiful. And if you're looking for a starter palette, this one's a much lower price point. So maybe this would actually be the better starter palette. Another palette that I thought was comparable, even though it is by no means a dupe, is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. This is also a basic Betty palette. You just have a couple of mattes, a couple of metallics. The color scheme is a little bit different and I realize that but um, once again it's neutral once again these are colors that are going to contour your eye it's very easy to get a soft look with this palette however I feel like this is also going to give you a little bit more variety I feel like you can get easily get more impactful looks with this particular palette so I feel like if you have the Tartlet and Bloom palette you really don't need the MAC palette and then I even went through my collection of singles and was able to dupe the palette there I was able to find pretty much a total 100% dupe for 10 out of 12 of the shadows. The only two I wasn't able to dupe was my favorite peachy shadow from the MAC palette. Um, this shadow here from Lethal is a little bit pinkier, and I wasn't able to perfectly dupe the pewter shade in the MAC palette, but this JD Glow shade comes kind of close to the idea. However, the mattes are pretty much spot-on dupes, and I thought that was actually interesting because the mattes that I chose were almost all from Viseart palettes, and Viseart and MAC are both makeup artist brands. And I find like makeup artist brands normally tend to follow similar goals. You know, when you're a makeup artist, you want to make your client look beautiful. And sometimes that means making them look very naturally beautiful as if they're not wearing makeup, as if their face is just perfect as it is. And sometimes the goal is, of course, to do something more editorial or more dramatic. And you can do that with the MAC shadows and you can also do that with the Vis Viseart shadows. So I thought that was just interesting to see those similarities there. But I mean, I was even able to dupe it that way. So there really isn't like a need to go out and buy the palette if you've already got a bunch of makeup. And then just for the sake of a formula comparison, I thought I would talk about a formula I think a lot of people in the makeup community know about, and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Shadows formula. Um, so the one found in the Modern Renaissance palette, Soft Glam palette, the Sultry palette. Um, the only reason I pulled out my Sultry is because this is the only one that I have in its original packaging. I have deep potted my Modern Renaissance and Glam palettes because I tend to use those as singles. Um, but this one I use as a palette because I like to take it on the road with me. Um, in general, this palette like or any of the ABH palettes, if you are into instant gratification, like my friend is, then like she's much more a fan of this formula than she is of the MAC formula. And it's totally understandable because these metallics gleam at you from across the room. And that's why I like them on stage. These mattes are also much more impactful right from the get-go. So you apply this and there's like an instant effect. However, what I've noticed like for feeling wise is that the metallics, the formula is a little bit heavier with the ABH formula. And so I feel like it weighs down the skin a little bit more on the eyelids. So if you have textured eyelids or if your skin is more mature, then maybe this formula might not be as nice as the MAC formula, but these still work really well. Um, the mattes, um, I've noticed that they feel a little bit grittier than the MAC palette does. That's not to say that these are gritty or that they feel like sandpaper. It's just that the MAC shadows are so silky that in comparison, these feel gritty. And I noticed that when I try to blend these out, um, the blend isn't as smooth or graceful. Like the MAC shadows blend out so smoothly. These take a little bit more work to get as smooth of a blend. So the ultimate question for a review would I buy this palette if it hadn't have been given to me? And the answer is no, I wouldn't have. Not because it's not good, but because I literally just went through my collection and showed you three palettes that I feel are 
at some level comparable to this one. So if I didn't have this in my hand right now, uh, I wouldn't go out and buy it, um, even though I really do like it. But the other question is, now that I do have it, am I going to keep it? And here's the thing. Like a friend of mine on Instagram even called me out on this. You know, he was like, you know, I know you didn't break your no buy, but, you know, doesn't accepting new makeup kind of defeat the whole purpose of this year of trying to get to know your collection and refine it and like minimize it and like create a very edited makeup kit? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it totally does. <laughs> and so um, when I accepted this palette from my friend, she was fully aware of the fact that I was looking at it as like a library book or like a library palette in this case where I was just kind of lending it out so that I could experience trying new makeup because just because I'm not buying any makeup doesn't mean I'm not interested in putting all the makeup on my face. Um, and so I was basically just using this as like, you know, uh, an opportunity to try some new makeup without actually having to add it to my collection. Um, and so she knew full well that there was a large possibility that I would not be keeping it and she's not going to be insulted if I decide to give it away. However, I've decided I have a problem <laughs> because even though I just showed you three palettes that are pretty comparable, I really like this one. I feel like it's different enough and I want to keep it. And I know that's really sick, but I mean, look at this aesthetic. Isn't it cute? I know. I, I, I know I have a problem, but I also have a solution. And that is that I have decided I'm going to give away another palette that I had in my collection um, and that this is going to replace another palette. So this is the palette I chose to give away. It is the Lorac Mega Pro 3 palette. And this is a really good palette. I've used it a lot. The um, mattes blend out really nicely. The shimmers are very impactful. I think they're beautiful. However, I've noticed that I don't pick this palette up for two reasons. One, it's just big. <laughs> and, um, and even though I love the colors in here, it's just a lot. And so I tend to reach for smaller palettes. And the second thing is, um, when it comes to the shimmers, I feel like they're either like too impactful or not impactful enough. It depends on the color. And I don't know, it's like I, I can never find the perfect balance of the shimmers for me. So I've decided that I would rather give this large palette away and keep the small MAC palette. Because in the end, I feel like they kind of serve the same function for me. And in a way, it is making my makeup kit smaller, right? Because this palette is smaller than this palette. I know, that's lame. <laughs> this palette's coming in, so this palette's going out, and that is the final word. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, I hope that you'll consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If there happens to be a makeup item that you'd like to see me review, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm not purchasing any new makeup this year. However, I do have a good deal of it here. So if there's something that you'd like to hear me talk about, then feel free to let me know. Other than that, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.